If everybody, we're going to go way back in time today. We're going to do something called the mid-ordinate rule. Uh, this is part of numerical integration, um, which you did with the trapezium rule way back, way back uh, when I first started teaching. We had to do three. We had to do the trapezium rule, mid-ordinate rule and Simpson's rule. Uh, and you could be asked to do any one of the three on the exam paper. And then they changed the syllabus in the early 2000s and they just stuck with the trapezium rule. But you know, I mean, mid ordinate rule is okay. Um, and then Simpson's rule is actually more accurate. And, that, and we will do that one as well as, of course, doing these like, little videos that are chatting you through. So, anyway, let's talk about mid ordinate rule. Um, and again, it is an estimation for the area under a curve. So what we can do is take a random function that looks a little bit like so. And again, what we're going to do is uh, split it up so that it's got different ordinates. So we can say that here we'll call this ordinate x0. And we're going to have, again, exactly the same width between the ordinates. I'm going to go up to x4. Okay. So these here, these straight lines, these are known, these x values are known as the ordinates. And this distance between each pair of ordinates is 8. And this is exactly the same length. And what happens is that for the mid-ordinate rule, well, the clue is in the title, mid-ordinate. So we are actually looking at halfway between each ordinate, like so. And you go up to the actual curve itself. And the mid ordinate actually, rather than the trapezium rule, it turns it does it as trapeziums to estimate the area. And of course, the closer the slant height of the trapezium is to the curve, the better. But the mid ordinate actually does it as rectangles instead. So, what we say is that once we've got this height going up, we can draw a straight line going across, like so and I can drop it down and we would actually calculate the area of this rectangle here okay from the gray line to this gray line here so between x3 and x4 and the idea is that this little section just here that is being missed out of the rectangle is almost the same as this bit here that's being included that is outside the curve Okay. The idea is that these are almost the same kind of area. So therefore, this is a fairly decent area, uh, estimate for the area beneath the curve between the ordinates x3 and x4. And then the same if I go up here. And sorry about the shadow cutting across my paper tonight. But again, if I go up this central line here, and again, draw straight lines like so, Again, the area that gets chopped off underneath the curve just here is fairly equal to this bit that's now being included just here. And again, come up here between those two ordinates and draw it again as a rectangle. It's a bit better. Look, this area here that's being included is almost equal to this one here that's being chopped off. And then we can do it down here as well. So what we've actually got, using the mid-ordinate, is just areas of rectangles. We have got a height here, times by whatever the function is, at this ordinate here, which is x 0.5. And then plus, and we have this height here, 
times by the function of obviously this height here this one here is a 1.5 this is x 1.5 you might see it written as a fraction and so on the height times by the function at the value of x when it's 2.5 and 3.5 but let's relabel this because obviously I'm not going to be putting 0 0.5 and 1.5 and so on what I'm actually going to be doing is h multiplied by the f of x at 0 0.5 and h times by f of x at the 1.5 okay so you don't actually want to be writing it like this it's very common for students to put in 0 0.5 in and 1.5 in order to work out these heights of course it's not that it's whatever that x value is at that particular position so I'm just now going to draw a line through that and of course it would go on all the way up to this would be n so it would be halfway to be just before that notation wise I'm not too worried about that bit um, but naturally we can multiply sorry not multiply factorize out the h and then we can just have the f of x 0.5 plus f of x at 1.5 and so on so it will be the f of x at 2.5 like so so to see it in practice then we're going to have that f of x is going to equal I thought we'd go for something like x squared plus 3 and we're going to actually be calculating the area what should we do between I think we'll do it between 1 and 5 and what we're going to have is 3 ordinates okay They have three ordinates, just three, uh, three actual x values. So x naught, x one, and x two. So it's going to be a fairly uh, straightforward one to do. So three ordinates. So this is the there's various ways you might want to set this out. Um, x value, x value, x value. They're your three ordinates. Uh, the bottom ordinate is of course one. And your top ordinate is 5, which means the middle one must be 3. So this here would be x0, this would be x1, and this would be x2. But the actual mid ordinates you're going to be using are x at 1.5 and x at 2.5. So we're looking at going halfway between 1 and 3, which would be 2 and then halfway between 3 and 5 which of course will be 4 and then we're going to work out the function at 2 and the function at 4 so I'm going to put x equals 2 into this equation which would be 7 and then I'm going to put 4 into this equation which would be 19 okay so the area is going to equal the height, well it's going up in twos, times by, and then we just add together the different functions, so 7 add 19. So 7 add 19 is 26, times that by 2 is 52. So if we were estimating using the mid-ordinate rule, the area between 1 and 5 of x squared add 3, it would equal 52. Let's see how accurate it is. So let's just go back. Doing x squared add 3 dx between 1 and 5. So I'm going to do it how we've always done before. Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. between 5 and 1 putting 5 in that gives me 125 over 3 plus 15 take away do it again that's 1 over 3 plus 3 right stick it into the calculator then 125 over 3 plus 15 take away 1 over 3 plus 3 so 
So oh, that should have been a push three then. I might have turned into a minus by accident then. And the answer is 53.3 recurring. Yeah. So that's it. That's the mid-ordinate rule in a nutshell.